time for another edition of the mailbag. I know I haven't done one of these since I think the spring, and this one will be just a little bit different. I'm going to start with the mail, and if I had any que- received any questions in writing, I would address them here, but I didn't. So, uh, But I'm going to show you a couple of interesting items I've received in the mail. Then I will show you the plea from a parish community for some help. So let's begin with the mail. Last time I did one of these videos, I forgot to include this book, which I received at that time. Its title is Star Spangled Heresy by Solange Hertz, which is a great examination of the error of Americanism, which is different than the secular use of the term, but though they are kind of related. But that theological error is central to synodality and Vatican II and the so-called new springtime in the church, and it was condemned by Pope Leo XIII. And I think I have that encyclical on this channel, so go and take a look in my um, Pope Leo XIII encyclicals here, and you'll find how he explains it if you need it. The book is a must-read, and you can find copies of this all over the place online, including at tumblrhouse.com. I highly recommend this book without hesitation or reservation. Thanks to the listener who sent it to me. It is truly appreciated. Secondly, a longtime listener sent this beautiful set of books to me. This is the set of books by Michael Davies that really goes in-depth into the arguments against the New Mass. If you want to know why some traditional Catholics are so hostile to the New Mass, read this set of books. The first is Cramner's Godly Order. The second is Pope John's Council. And the third is Pope Paul's New Mass. It took three increasingly long books to cover the topic because it's complicated. <clears throat> Those books, along with Father Chicada's book on the New Mass, are probably the definitive counter-arguments to all the it's valid and licit, bro, the church would never promulgate an erroneous liturgy types who usually ignore that Benedict XVI had to actually correct aspects of the words of consecration in the Novus Ordo to bring them in line correctly with the theology of the church. Anyway, this set of books is available on Angelus Press's website for about 70 bucks, which sounds expensive until you look for the books elsewhere in earlier print editions and discover that each book goes for staggering amounts of money. I'm not even kidding about that. So Angelus is the best deal out there, and these are hardbound and artfully produced. So a big thank you goes out to the listener who sent these to me, and no, Angelus Press didn't ask me to pitch them to you. Finally, my wife and I received this from a listener named Maria, who made a baptismal gown for our daughter. For those of us who are relatively new to my channel, I don't get personal usually anywhere except in these mailbag videos. It's the only place I ever do it. My wife and I are expecting a daughter, and she is due in late October, and it'll be child number two. No, I won't be posting pictures of her or my wife, since that's not wise to do these days, but Maria offered to send us a baptismal gown, and it arrived earlier this week, right after I decided to delay a day in making this actual video. Always listen to those hunches, because maybe it's your guardian angel trying to drop a hint, and in this case, that may have been the case. Anyway, so this dress is beautiful and comes from Paraguay, which is just incredible when you think about it. For those wondering, my daughter will be baptized in the traditional pre-Vatican II form of the baptism, which is the least I can do for my children. If anything, access to those pre-conciliar forms of the sacraments are alone reason enough for making a long drive to the Latin Mass with any of the groups that offers it, and it's one of the reasons why I'm just so hostile to a lot of the anti-SSPX stuff these days, even though I go to a FSSP parish most of the time. And no, I'm not saying the new sacraments are invalid, but they are different in form. And I do plan to make a video, or more likely, a series of videos, on how they were changed after the council. But if anyone knows a good series that doesn't come from a rather specific group of set of a contest that I am not fond of, let me know in the comments how to find it. Don't post a link because that won't work. But just let me know the channel name and title of the video, and I can go from there, and I can maybe make a playlist or make a recommendation somewhere in a future video. I also received some art from a listener, so thank you for that. I do enjoy receiving these kinds of things from people because a lot of thought and effort goes into it, as well as always just liking when I get letters or anything really from people. If you want to send me anything, whether it's a donation or a letter or a book or whatever, there is in the description box of this video a P.O. box listed, so you can do just that. Just include with whatever you send an email address so I can thank you. I can't respond in old-fashioned writing, really, and I can't call you either. Some people include cell or landline numbers, and I can't make personal calls. These days, it's unwise to do for a lot of reasons, most basically because we live in a time when people will use personal information for nefarious purposes, and I have made a few enemies doing this over the last three years. I'm not saying that the people who asked for or implied that I should call them have those purposes, but... 
All it would take would be me to make a single er judgment error and my life would become unbearable. Ask anyone who has had their private information strewn across the internet how that went down for them. It's ugly, so I have to be careful. However, you can include an email address and I will email you as long as I can read the address. Someone sent me a letter with an email included and frankly, I couldn't read the handwriting, which probably means it was from someone with letters after their name like me because I noticed that as I went further into grad school, the worse my handwriting got. There's got to be some kind of good scientific explanation for that. Finally, a parish community has reached out to ask for assistance. It's a diocesan parish in New York that is dedicated to the Latin Mass, and they are tiny and they do need your help. So I figured I'd offer to help in any way that I can. And if I can't use the bizarre success I've had doing this work on YouTube to help parish communities and the faithful in need who are trying to preserve the traditions of the faith, then I should really just go to confession and do some deep introspection. Anyway... I'll actually just read the posting the parish priest wrote on his blog about this so you can see what it is they need and why they're raising funds. And you can find all the relevant links in the pinned comment through which will take you to my show notes where you can then see the other links. Our hosts have some peculiar rules about these kind of things, and I do try to follow them because they have every right to make those kind of rules. Anyway, on to the priest's post. Our parish has offered the traditional Latin Mass since 1989 under Ecclesia Dei. We have grown into a de facto personal parish with traditional Mass offered every day following Samorum Pontificum in 2007. We are undertaking a large project to restore our church. Our 100-year-old plaster and lathe ceiling was cracking and deteriorating as the keys and lugs through large sections had broken over time. The ceiling was in danger of falling. We are restoring the ceiling to preserve it and also repairing and painting deteriorated plaster throughout the church interior. The project will cost $243,000, and we have raised about 10% of the total cost so far. Please consider supporting our parish, one of only two in the Archdiocese of Washington, which offer traditional Mass daily and sacraments in the traditional Latin Rite. You can donate by sending a check made out to St. Francis de Sales Catholic Church and mailing us to us at P.O. Box 306, Benedict, Maryland, 20612. We have a GoFundMe page at, and then there's the hyperlink, you can also use a credit card at our website. Please note that a percentage of your donation will be applied toward applicable fees. You can do so at, again, another link. And I'll have a link to this blog post in the special show notes for today over at returntotradition.org as well. And he, and he says, thank you for your kind consideration and for the generosity of your prayers for the successful completion of the project. We hope to be back in the church for Holy Mass to honor Our Lady of Fatima on October 13th. Please join us in praying through the intercession of our patron, St. Francis de Sales. So there you have it. And because I trust this donation request, I've personally donated $100 to the cause. And I'm only telling you that not only to show that I trust it, but also because I do believe in putting my money where my mouth is for these sorts of things. So please don't think that I told you that I donated to show just how holy I am or anything, because people say that about us on the trad side. Anyway. Links to all of this are in the pinned comment, which will take you to the show notes at returntotradition.org. And keep that parish in your prayers so they can be back at their parish by the 13th of October as requested. Now that's about it for this month. Thanks again to all the donors and patrons who make my work possible. It is deeply appreciated. Also, again, if you send me a letter, please include an email address and anything that you send so I can thank you. And make it legible, please. I struggle enough with languages as it is. So again, thank you, and as always... Please pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.